Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachakwadash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew tongue. I also want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And also want to send out a hearty shalom to all the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk their lives doing so in efforts of waking up the hopefully elect of the nation of Israel. This is your brother Karai from the Great Millstone, Miami, coming back at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay. Um, you know, seeing uh, the times that we're coming into and seeing, you know, how prophecy is uh, is moving faster than ever. You know, uh, you know, just sitting there meditating, you know, on the fact that, uh, you know, we're all going to, uh, you know, going to going to be faced with the, with our trying moment or moments, you know, and, um, you know, it's pretty much going to prove all the things that, uh, you know, all the knowledge and wisdom that we've obtained, you know, through the, through our walk in this ministry. Okay, and that's ultimately what it what it what it's all for. Okay, um, that's why I got you know guys that are not walking in this thing sincerely. Okay, there's a there's a, a day of reckoning coming, you know. But uh, for those of us that are sincere and uh, Lord willing, out the hopefully elect. Okay, there's gonna be a trying time and a trying moment that's gonna prove that ultimately that's gonna prove us. Okay, just like that gold that's being tried in that fire. Okay. And that's why uh, you read Isaiah 33 and 6. It says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Okay. And uh, strength of strength of salvation. Okay. Because that's ultimately what it boils down to. Okay. Uh, like the beloved brother. I, I say it all the time. Uh, Nahalia out there in uh, Orlando. He uh, always says, keep the main thing the main thing. Okay. And ultimately, the main thing is obedience to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai unto salvation. Okay. And if that's your focal point, okay, and you're walking in this thing sincerely, then as the scriptures say, you shall never fall or never fail, Salakia, right? Never fall, Salakia, okay? Meaning fall away from this thing, you know? Obviously, the scriptures speak about a righteous man falleth seven times, but he gets back up and he doesn't fall into perdition, okay? So, uh, I'm falling into mischief, Salakia, you know? Um, but yeah, you know, that's why I uh, titled this, uh, this lesson, We Ought to Obey the most high uh rather than men okay because they a, a part of what our trying moments and trying times are going to be is you know being brought before the councils okay uh before governors and um you know being asked to denounce our faith in your how about shimmy out shot okay or with torture tactics you know my son was just telling me about he saw a torture tactic where uh it's a psychological uh torture where they put you in a white room you know and uh, everything is white, <laughs> you know, and uh, the food they bring you is white, you know, and what it does is work on your mental, you know, but hey, you know, we, hey, that's why the scriptures say, uh, uh, count the cost, okay? Understand what you're a part of and understand what this entails. Okay, uh, this guy uh, in New York, uh, the uh, beloved uh, elder, uh, Priest Shaman did a, uh, you know, a quick, quick lesson on it. Uh, I can't I can't remember his name because that was my first time ever hearing about him. Uh, cast a cost something, you know, but you, you brothers know what I'm talking about. Uh, basically, the dude out in New York who had, you know, like a fundraiser or whatever, and it turned into a riot. OK, and he was brought, you know, he was basically arrested. And, you know, the, pre, the police were pretty much trying to in, uh, charge him with inciting a riot, you know. And really what they were looking at is that he had a huge influence. All those people there were basically in support of him and they started riding okay so they looked at it as uh you know basically he's a, a provocateur you know well guess what <clears throat> they're going to consider us provocateurs okay why because a hey, and we're doing it now but as the times progress okay we're gonna uh, we're gonna get more and more bolder through the spirit of power you how about shimao and we're gonna uh you know basically be on the front line of telling people not to take that, that MOTB, okay, that microchip, okay? Because we were on the front line telling people not to take the, the jump shot or the jab, right? Okay, 
but obviously uh <laughs> the jab is not the uh the microchip okay and it's a much more serious time and um you know uh that's a part of our life okay that it, that can't be hid under a un, under a mattress okay and that's to warn our people from taking that microchip you know and and guess what that's why the scriptures speak about us being thrown into prison okay for our testimony in Yahweh Shah, you know and, and being the uh you know the ones that bear the, the the light the true bearers of light okay which is the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. okay so yeah we're, we're coming into some times that are going to be trying brothers you know but uh the main focus is we ought to obey the most high rather than men okay so since i've quoted it might as well start off with it uh this is uh book of acts chapter five let's see where i want to start though Bear with me. Acts chapter 5, verse 25. And obviously, this is the account uh, when the disciples uh, were put in prison. Okay. And then the guards came the next day. Uh, well, the angel, angel of the Lord, had uh, released them out of the prison. And, uh, you know, the guards came and they didn't see him. And then, uh, you know, basically the high priest, okay, um, basically brought the apostles uh, to council, right? Uh, so we're going to start at uh, verse 25. This is Acts chapter 5, verse 25. It says, Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. You see? And, and, and that's the vibration that we're under, man. We, we got to, hey, we got to push this word, man. It's all about our Heavenly Father's uh, uh, doctrine, His business, okay? He came to do the business of our Father. You see, so they, as soon as they get out of prison, <laughs> they're in the temples preaching, man. They're supposed to be locked up, you feel me? So verse 26, it says, Then went the captain with the officers and brought them uh, without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should have been uh, stoned, right? Verse 27, and when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, uh, verse 28, saying, Did not we straightly command you that ye should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Okay? So, you know, we know, we know the whole tale. Okay, you had uh, the Jews who, you know, uh, were learned men and then seeing the disciples or the apostles, okay, which they uh, considered unlearned men, okay, and basically continuing on the doctrine of our Lord Yahweh Shai, okay, which ultimately is of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay, and we know, hey, these guys had high offices and, um, you know, basically uh, were, were in fear of losing their positions. Okay, and saw the works that were work that were wrought. Okay, uh, the works that were wrought by Yahweh Shai and his followers, or more specifically the apostles. Okay, and they were in their feelings. They were hurt. They were butt hurt, man. Okay, and uh, you know as they did with Yahweh Shai, they sought out occasions to blame these men for different things. Okay, and, and, and so here they're, they're telling them, "Didn't we tell y'all not to be teaching in the name of Yahweh Shai?" Didn't we, didn't we straightly tell y'all not to do that? Okay, and this is what uh, the apostle Peter replied, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey the most high rather than men. Okay, we ought to obey the most high rather than men. Okay, and that's going to be extremely prominent. That's got to be our mindset moving forward. Okay, because a lot of things are going to be brought before us. Okay, uh, like I always like to say, we're public enemy number one. Okay, why? Because we represent the only uh, counteraction uh, to Esau Edom. Okay, the self-proclaimed white man. Okay, you you can't amass guns, weapons. You can't hoard up enough goods. Okay, you can't move to Mars. 
<laughs> you know, okay? Uh, you can't build a bunker, especially you Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, okay? <clears throat> you can't build bunkers, you know? They're very, very pricey, millions of dollars, okay? So our only counteraction to what this devil has planned is our obedience in Yahweh Ba'ashim Shah. okay? And this devil knows it. He knows it, you know? And that's why uh, he takes down the videos, okay? There's a blackout. There's a media blackout on the Israelite groups or group. Well, I'll say groups because I'm pretty sure there are other... Uh, I know there are other groups that uh, preach the same doctrine as Great Millstone, but ultimately, if you teach... Uh, if we all teach the same thing, okay, then we're one, okay? So, okay, there's going to be a persecution on, on the men that, that do those things, just as it has always been in, in our ancestry, going all the way back to the times of Elijah, you know, Jerusalem that, kill, uh, that killed the prophets, okay? That's just a part of what we've been called into, okay? But just uh, rest assured that none of those men were never left or forsaken, Okay? The Heavenly Father was always with them, okay? No matter what, even if it was unto death, okay? And that has to be our mindset moving forward. I'll read that part again. It says, uh, verse 29, Acts 5 and 29, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey the Most High rather than man, okay? And that, that is our staple. That's the foundation that we're going to stand on. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna rep. We, we're going to uh, obey the Most High, okay? Especially coming back. You know, the Lord uh, 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 allowing us to come back to him, waking us up out of our slumber. You know, as the scriptures say, uh, uh, being that, seeing that we've returned, seek him 10 times more. Okay. And that's a part of it. Like I said, everything that we've gone through in this ministry, all the lessons we watched, all the going out to the highways and hedges. Okay. All the teaching, all the fellowshipping, you know, all the afflictions, all the tribulations, all of those things are building us up for our trying moment or moments. Okay, and we got we got great examples. We got great examples of men that did exactly that. Okay, and stood firm in the face of adversity. Right. Um, let's get another one. This is uh, Salakia. This is the book of Ecclesiastes. And then it just goes back to the, 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 the foundation, that the sincere milk, okay, that we were, we obtained coming into this thing, okay? That's why the scriptures say what? As babes desire the sincere milk, okay? Because as a babe, you know, when you coming in, what nourishes, okay? When you look in the, uh, you know, on a literal sense, what nourishes an a, a infant? Her mother, the, the, their mother's milk, Okay? So the, the scriptures are being referred to as as that milk, okay, that an infant would need or as a babe would need, okay, which builds us up, okay, and, and serves as what? Our foundation, you see? And that's what it ultimately is going to go back, go, uh, boil back down to. Obviously, like the Apostle uh, Tahar uh, recently said, all members of Great Millstone should know all the breakdowns, okay? Or, or if not most of them, you know, he, he went on the limb to say that, you know? But uh, obviously, though, that, that is extremely important, okay, as far as understanding the scriptures and being ready to give an answer for the faith that is in me, right? But um, it's ultimately going to boil back down to, to our core principles, okay, which is obeying the most high over man, right? And this is another one. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Uh, verse 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Yahweh Ba'ashim Shai and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Okay? So, one may ask, well, what's our purpose here? Israelites only, obviously. <laughs> uh, one way ask, what is our purpose here? Well, um, what are the scriptures for? What do we need to know about God? Why do we need to be obedient? Okay, where well, the conclusion is, we are to fear the Most High and keep his commandments. That's our whole duty. Okay, and one of his commandments is uh, put no other gods before the Most High. Okay, and if you're taking heed to uh, a, a man over the Most High, well, you're basically um, labeling him your God. Okay, just like when it comes down to this digital all, that microchip.
Okay, if you take that, then you're saying that Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed white man is your God, okay? Because it goes back into that all which you put in your servant, which which uh, 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 symbolizes that you want to be a slave or a servant to that master forever, okay? But obviously the heavenly father is the almighty, the omnipotent in the, the uh, one power in the universe, okay? So if you take that, He's gonna put you down, okay, via thermonuclear holocaust, you know, and then you're gonna come and worship him, okay? So it, it's it's irrefutable, <laughs> to say the least, right? So it says, uh, I read it again, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So what is this all about, okay? What 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 are we doing this for? What do, what will we put on earth for? More importantly, Israelites, right? It says, fear the Most High and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man okay so as an israelite man negro latino and native americans and they that be of the speckled bird okay that are scattered abroad in southern nations if you're not fearing the most high and keeping the commandments you're not a man okay and it's going to fully manifest in the times of trouble when shit hits the fan okay uh, uh jeremiah 30 and 7 men's uh with their hands on their loins as if they're giving birth that's what jeremiah saw he saw a bunch of men acting like women okay crying and yelling and yelping okay and that's what's gonna happen, okay? Because the times, hey, we we read them and we bring them out all the time, okay? But even we we can't put it in. You can't really put uh, the 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 severity, okay, and the intricacies of what the heavenly Father is about to do here on this planet. You can't really put it into 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 words, okay? Although the scriptures do, you know, as much as we need to, but the the, the, the severity and the extremeness, uh, uh, extremity. <laughs> Uh, Salaki, I'm making up words. Uh, the, the extreme se se severity of the times that are coming. Okay, we can't really put into words, you know, but the scriptures do it well enough. Okay, and guess what? For those of us that are, you know, uh, seeking salvation, you know, and, and that have been called into this thing, okay, that ain't really for us to like look into into depth, you know. The scriptures speak about those things being for the wicked, right? But nonetheless, okay, they they remind us of why we need to walk that walk that straight, uh, walk on that straight and narrow, uh, so to speak. You know, that straight going into that straight gate. Why? Because of all the things that are coming, right? And the core principle uh, 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 of what we've been called into is to fear the Most High and keep His commandments. Okay, and what we're going to be faced with are, you know, our adversaries trying to get us to forsake that, to get us to come against uh, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, okay? But if we understand what this thing is all about and who's in charge, okay, not Esau, Edom, not the self proclaimed white, he's not in charge. The heathens, they're not in charge, okay? Our Heavenly Father through His Son is in charge. And as long as we remember that, okay, no matter what our circumstances are, no matter what our trials and tribulations are, we're gonna be fine, okay? Why? Because the scriptures say so, okay? And like I said, we got great examples of men that were put in certain predicaments, kept their faith, called to walk, meaning all good, all great, right? Uh, even if they had to, uh, uh, you know, had to rest, okay? Had to perish for their faith, where well, nothing is more renowned than for a man to die for his faith in Yahweh Bashim Shah, okay? Not your faith in Allah or Buddha, none of that bullshit, okay? Your faith in Yahweh Bashim Shah, nothing is more honorable than that, okay? That's why these men have their accounts. These men, Salakia, have their accounts written in the scriptures, okay? To give us example and give us uh, uh, inspiration and motivation to endure the times that we're coming into, right? So, uh, Let's get a, one, of the, one of the most beautiful accounts. Uh, this is uh, the book of Daniel. No Salakia. Got my eight and my six mixed up. Salakia.
Now, obviously, this is the uh, account of value pretty much going into the lion's den, okay? And well, we were gonna get into the reasons why, okay, he was put into that lion's den, okay? Uh, Uh, we get straight to the point because obviously uh the president's pretty much you know just to give an overview the president's got jealous because he will uh darius appointed daniel okay to be the head of, of the president as an israelite okay who was not a mead <laughs> right he was an israelite and obviously they took offense to it you know um but hey tough titty right <laughs> uh this is daniel chapter 6 verse 7 it says all the pre presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Okay, so they came up pretty much to lock you. Yeah, so they pretty much came with this uh, up with this decree because they were jealous of, uh, uh, of Daniel, okay? And they sought to uh, uh, make an occasion, you know, uh, let's come up with something to say that he did this or did that, but they couldn't find an occasion. It's, that's why the scriptures speak about us being blameless, okay? Because guess what? They're going to seek occasion for us to try to say, okay, well, they did this, they did that. Well, he ain't paying his taxes. He, you know, he owes this much on uh, on child support, this, that, or the third. Okay, and some of those things are, you know, unavoidable, okay? But for the most part, we ought to be blameless, okay? So they can't say, oh, well, he's been on the run. He's on the run from the police. He has an outstanding warrant for his arrest. Let's get him on that, you know? So in this, it, just as in this case, they had to come up with something, okay? And they're gonna have to, they're gonna do the same thing with us, okay? And that's the, uh, importance okay uh, 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 having an understanding of these scriptures and reading these accounts okay they're going to serve as our wisdom and knowledge and that's going to stabilize us in the trying times that, that are coming right so it says verse 8 now O king establish it establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians which uh which altereth not Okay, so they they making sure like we're gonna get this nigga man, you know what I'm saying? And and, and put it into the writing so it it'll always be, okay. So no matter how long this guy rules, we'll find something on him. Or whatever, whoever, whatever Israelite that uh, gets into power. Okay? Verse nine. I mean becomes a president. Salaki. Like Verse nine. It says, Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed. He went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his power as he did a four time. OK, so, you know, obviously uh, using wisdom. OK, but see, he, he had no wherewithal that these guys were uh, uh, trying to make an occasion for him to get him caught up. Okay, so he heard the decree. So he said, you know what? Let me go in my house. Let me let me go to the house. You know what I'm saying? Let me get away from them. You know what I'm saying? Go in my house and pray. Like he normally did, like the scripture said, like he did a four time. Right? Uh, to to Yahweh Bashim Shah. Okay, regardless of that decree. Now there's certain things like, you know, like uh, uh, trying to keep the law perfect. Okay, certain things that we cannot do. Okay, but certain things are, uh, un unalienable okay meaning uh there's certain rights or, 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 or uh, statutes that the heavenly father has committed unto us that we cannot break okay and, and, and one of them is praising his holy name okay in, in prayer the scriptures tell us to pray without ceasing you see so here it is Daniel doing what the heavenly father commands us to do you know and he's uh, uh, wicked heathens that made a decree to catch this man up. Why? Because they're jealous that he's been appointed the president. Okay? 
Well, guess what, brothers? We're gonna be faced with those same type of uh, 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 situations, okay? Let's see if we can get some more out of this. Uh, verse 11, then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making suppl uh, supplication before his power. Verse 12, then they came near and spake before the, ki uh, uh, before the king concerning the king's decree. Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any power or man within 30 days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the lion's den? The king answered and said, uh, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not, verse 13. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with him, with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored uh, till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Okay, so hey, and we all know how that played out. Okay, <laughs> the the the, the uh, Daniel being put in the lion's den and you know praying, giving supplication, and like he had did a four time, giving supplication to Yahweh Hashem Yahshah, standing firm on his principles, fearing the Most High, not a lion, or fearing the Most High and not the king. Okay. And what what happened he was delivered okay the lion went to sleep you know what i'm saying and it was a hungry lion at that you see so just an account and, and this is written in the scriptures okay here it is a hungry lion and through uh daniel's supplication and his obedience to yahweh Shah, he was kept you see and that's the mind that has to be within us the same mind that was in yahweh Shah, as the scriptures say you know look at yahweh Shah, his trying moment okay being led as a sheep to the slaughter okay didn't buck up, did what he had to do, okay? And that mindset has to be within us, man, okay? Because, hey, that's a part of what we signed up. When you go fill out that application, okay, I'm gonna sign up to be a prophet. Well, uh, you're gonna have around, down there, you know, in the parentheses, in bold letters, you may be tried for your faith, okay? <laughs> that's just the reality of what we were part of, man, okay? And you gotta rejoice in it, because ultimately, what are we doing? Well, we're, we're being uh, punished. And persecuted for what? For righteousness sake. For our faith in Yahweh Bashmi al which the world pretends or claims to believe in. Okay? It's just that we do it in truth and sincerity. Okay? So fuck what these people got to say, man. Fuck what they put on our plate. Okay? We know our power. We know who we serve. Right? Uh, let's get another one. Another account. One of my favorites. This is uh, the book of 2 Maccabees, uh, chapter 7, which started at the top, okay, about the uh, seven sons and their mother, okay, but we're not going to, you know, for the sake of time, I won't read all I want to, <laughs> uh, but for the sake of time, I'll just read, you know, uh, the gist of it so we can get the uh, basic understanding and, and see another account, okay, so this is uh, first uh, Salakia, 2 Maccabees, chapter 7, verse 1, it says, it came to pass also that seven brethren, with their mother were taken and, com and compelled by the king uh, Salakia, let me flip it this way yeah it says, but one of the Salakia I started uh, the top again it says, it came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against their Salaki against the law to taste swine's flesh and were tormented with scourges and whips. Verse 2. But one of them that and this is and this is what you know what hit me because I've read this story uh you know hundreds of times, you know, but it hit me this time. You know, these men, you know, stood firm, you know, to not against eating swine's flesh. Okay. You know, and, and so imagine, you know, standing firm against a lion, you know, you know, and, and you know, or, or the times that we're coming into, the hour of temptation, 
okay? They still firm for not eating swine's flesh, which is a part of the law, which we have to keep, okay? But it just shows you, okay? When the spirit of Yahweh Shemiah shines upon a man, he, he doesn't fear death, okay? Here we go. Oh, he smell my, uh, my oats and my, uh, what is this? Sea moss with oats. Pretty good, that's <laughs> lucky. But anywho, uh, and these men stood firm because they they would nope, we're not gonna eat pork, okay? Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure they could recall Isaiah 66, 15 on down, right? They that eat swine's flesh shall be consumed. Yeah, <laughs> right. And this is another example of men obeying the Most High rather than man, right? It says, uh, verse two. But one of them that spake first said, thus, what wouldest thou ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of our fathers. You see? And that has to be the mindset, brothers. Okay? Because we ate, and, 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 and more importantly, understanding life and death. Okay? Which the scriptures teach us. You know? And that's why uh, mo uh, the majority of the times when Renowned men uh, 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 give up the ghost, okay? They consider it what? He he rested. He rested with his fathers, okay? The apostle Paul told us what? Death is gain, okay? Now, obviously, and he said also, uh, he'd rather uh, be with the most high, okay? Than to, to, than to be alive, roughly paraphrasing, okay? But he also said, you know, but I have, uh, uh, you know, it, it is, it's, you know, roughly paraphrasing, more profitable for him to, be alive and to preach the word okay especially in the lot that he was put in okay okay which was ultimately the apostle to the gentiles you know but when you read paul's writings man uh, marvelous writings ultimately the most works in the scriptures as far as writings go okay and he understood that okay but he also understood that if he had to perish you know like the time when uh it was time for him to go to uh, uh, uh jerusalem he basically said look I'm, I'm ready for whatever, you know, if they, if they gonna put me to death, so be it, okay? Like Yahweh Shah told him, you can't kick against the pricks. What, what the Most High has designed and ordered for you, you can't disannul, okay? And that's one of the greatest understandings that we have. So fully ingesting that, then you're like, whatever, okay? That's what makes us bold, the understanding, okay, of life and death, okay? You die, because you're, you're, when you're in, in, in the flesh, this, this is considered what? Chains of darkness, okay? So when you die, you, you're released from your chains of darkness and you're with the Heavenly Father, okay? But obviously, we want to see the downfall of our enemy, okay? We want to live to see Yahweh Shah coming back on that chariot, you know? We want to do those things, but if the Heavenly Father has it lined up, lined up for us to perish because of our, for, you know, for our, our faith in Yahweh Shem Shah, so be it. So how are you going to make a man that has that mindset fear? Just like we just read. It says, I'll read it again. But one of them that spake first said, Thus, what wouldst thou ask, of, uh, ask or learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the laws of, of our fathers. Right? It says, Then the king, being in a rage, commanded, uh, commanded, Panez and and uh, uh, no Salakia. <laughs> I said Panez. Come, I'm reading uh, uh, in the, uh, the, the 1611. And you know the writing is a little different. Uh, it says, "Then the king, being enraged, commanded pans and cauldrons um, to be made uh, hot." Right, verse four. It says, which forwith being heated, he commanded to cut out the tongue of him that spake first and to cut off the utmost parts of his body, meaning his limbs, okay? Arms, legs, right? The rest of his brethren and his mother looking on. Now, when he was uh, thus maimed, and all his members cut off all his members right 
he commanded him being yet alive to be brought to the fire and to be fried in the pans and as the vapor of the pan was for a good space dispersed they exhorted one another with the mother to die manfully saying thus the lord yahweh look up upon us and in truth have comfort in us as moses in his song which witness to their faces uh declared saying and he shall be comforted in in his servants okay so that's our heritage you know that is our heritage okay this is a wicked world and uh the prince of the power of the air is ruling okay and anybody that comes against that wickedness is considered an outlaw okay or, or, or committing treason as it has always been okay that's why i say it's to count the cost you know but also understanding that to perish for righteousness sake is nothing more honorable okay and i'll say this that's if you perish okay and that brings me to my last precept Revelations uh, chapter 2 verse 10 right and it says fear none of those things right and we just read a few examples put in lines then these torture tactics that they got put in the all white room being waterboarded uh, being electrocuted you know with those you know having you hooked up to the you know impulses and having you shocked and shit you know fuck all that man Okay, bring that shit on, man. Because we're not doing nothing wrong. That's the reality. We're not doing anything wrong. Okay, yeah, this is Esau, Edom's kingdom, and he's he's the ruler, okay? But the title of the lesson, we ought to obey the most high rather than man, okay? You already got your foot on our neck. You've already castrated our people, maimed us, okay? Um, the, the, the atrocities you committed to the tribes for, for thousands of years, okay? You've already done that. Okay, now there's certain things we're not gonna budge on, right? And, and that's and, and that's the mindset. That's gonna be the mindset of the remnant. The majority of our people are gonna be hook, line, and sinker. They already are. Okay, they already worship the beast. So when it's time to get that all put into them, they're gonna take it. Okay, because they already worship him. You know, and then he's gonna make a circumstance where you can't deny it. Okay. Well, they're gonna think they can't deny it. Okay? But there are going to be examples on the earth of men who are going to deny it. Okay, And, and, and whatever the, the result of that, so be it. We don't care. Okay, Call Halayim like Yahweh by Shem Yahweh right? So this is uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. It says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Okay, It says the devil, showing you that the devil is a man. So what the spiritual demon that, that people have... Uh, imagine in their mind gonna come grab you uh, a spirit okay and throw you no 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 the devil is speaking about esau edom the self-proclaimed white man the deceiver or the accuser of the brethren okay look up the word devil right it says uh and why is he gonna cast us into prison because of our testimony because of what are we preaching okay we're gonna uh, be considered uh provocateurs okay because guess what a lot of people are gonna wake up and start believing you see uh, uh we speak about uh, two thirds of our people, the scriptures speak about two thirds of our people perishing, okay, which is 66.6% .6 of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and they that be of the speckled bird that are here in America. 66.6%, .6 right? But one third of those people are going to be delivered, starting with the 144,000, okay, and, and, and the, the believers, which at the end of the day is a lot of people, okay? Can't put actually put a number on it, but it's a lot of people, not a lot compared to. Uh, 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 the rest of the world, okay? But that is a lot of people. And we don't see those numbers now, okay? But eventually it's gonna manifest. Why? Because we're gonna be prophesying. We're gonna be bringing it out, okay? Up until there's a famine of the world, until the Heavenly Father says stop, okay? And there's gonna be a lot of believers, a lot of people that are gonna be converted. And we're gonna be seen as agent provocateurs. So guess what? Read it again.
This is a uh, Lockie, bear with me, I lost it. Uh, Revelations chapter 2, verse 10. It says, Fear none of the, uh, those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Okay? Basically, a, a period of time. Okay? And, and, and as the scripture said, these times are going to be sped up. Okay? Why? So that the elect can be saved. Because there would be no flesh to be saved. If the Heavenly Father doesn't speed this thing up. But for a duration of time, it says. Read it again. Verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation. Ten days. You see, tribulation. Meaning they're going to be torturing you. They're going to be trying to make you come up off of what you believe in. Or trying to uh, put that digital all on you. Or trying to, you know, get you to uh, uh, take the digital all. They're not going to force it in you, okay? You, you're going to have an option. You're going to be able to declare which power you're going to serve. Like, as the scriptures say, you can't serve two masters, okay? You're going to hate the one and love the other, okay? And we hate Esau, Edom, and we love you. How about Shemiah Shah, period. But the majority of our people love Esau, Edom, okay? Their oppressor and hate you. How about Shemiah Shah? And you don't have to say it. Your deeds show it, Okay? Your deeds are going to testify against you, right? It says, uh, And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Okay? And that's what it is, man. That disannuls any type of uh, doubt or fear. Okay? Why? Because he hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but of power. Okay, and of a sound mind. That's what he's given us. Okay, we can't make him out to be a liar. And, and the elect will not. Okay, why? Because he's going to put the spirit on them to endure those trying times and those tribulations that they're going through. But we have to be set upon the basis and the foundation that we ought to obey the most high rather than men, regardless of what situation we're in. And we're going to be put into some tight pickles. Okay, for lack of better words, you know. But hey, Call to Wob. It's all good. All good. We're doing the right thing. We're doing what the scriptures say to do. Okay. And we've been made, we've been fully made manifest in our beliefs and what we believe in. And we're seeing prophecies unfold. Okay. So if now, if not now, uh, uh, this is the best time, the greatest time to believe, man. Okay. So your yeah, brothers, um, man, get up out of here for the niggly bears start coming out. You know, I always come come out here and exercise, and every time I'm here, nobody's here now. You know, niggas over there playing music and shit. But hey, we already know how this thing works. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna end it there. And uh, uh, Lord willing, it was edifying. So with that, I say, Kwam Yasharal and the Baba Ba Shalom.